Hey folks, today I'm going to kind of walk you through how to create a custom link model for Ship of Harkinian. Uh, this is kind of a comprehensive guide, kind of not. Uh, you need some Blender knowledge ahead of time. You kind of have to know your way around modeling tools. Um, and you'll need quite a few add-ons and other applications to get this to work properly. You also have to have a decomp repository ready to go. I'm not going to go into how to do that in this tutorial because that's way too much. Um, but the GitHub has good instructions on that and there will be a link in the description. So let's get started. All right, so first things first, what we're going to need to set up is decomp. Uh, this is by far the most tedious step. It took me forever to figure out a lot of trial and error. However, the GitHub has gotten much better since I did it last. Um, and there will be a link to this in the description. There will be a link in the description for all of the tools we're gonna use, which you can see all the tabs up at the top here. Um, more or less, you wanna scroll down here under to installation and follow it for Windows, assuming you're using Windows. Um, follow the WSL install guide, 10 out of 10, it's great. Uh, use Ubuntu, also great. Um, you'll also need Fast64. This is a specific fork of Fast64 for Harbor Masters. You want to make sure you use this version. Uh, any other version of Fast64 and what we're going to do today will not work. Um, after that, you'll need to download Retro. This will also be in the, in the description. Uh, Retro is essentially the tool you're going to use to transfer between Blender and Ship of Harkinian. Um, we'll go into that when we get there too. And you'll need a specific version of Blender. And the one we're using is going to be 3.3.5. Um, again, download's going to be in the description. And then you're going to need the model that you want to replace Link with. Uh, I'm going to be using Halo 2 Master Chief this time around. Okay, so you got everything you need downloaded. Um, we're going to open up Blender 3.3.5. And here I have a blank project, deleted the default cube, rest in peace. Um, and you are going to install the add-on for Fast64. To do that, we're gonna hop up here into Edit, go to Preferences, click on Add-ons. From here, you're gonna click Install, and go to your Downloads. Your Fast64 zip file for the add-on should be here. Double-click on it, install it, select it in the add-on list. That'll appear here. So if I type in Fast, you'll see I have Fast64. Now Blender is partially set up. From here, if your toolbar is hidden on the right hand side, hit N on your keyboard. And you'll have a tab called Oot and a tab called Fast64. What we're gonna wanna do is open up our Ocarina of Time tab. You're gonna click the little folder icon here for the decomp path. And you're gonna pick the folder where your Ocarina of Time decomp is. For me, it's in my F drive. Go to my Ocarina of Time PC port, mod tools, decomp, decomp, hit accept. So now your tools are essentially set up and ready to go. The very first thing we're gonna wanna do for replacing Link, now that our decomp folder is set up, we're gonna come up here to Ocarina of Time Skeleton Exporter. Under here where it says Import Skeleton, we're gonna swap the mode to Adult Link. We're gonna leave all of these settings on default and we're gonna click import skeleton. Blender will cry a little bit as it tries to find link skeleton. Hopefully it doesn't crash. Hey, there we go. Okay, so now you can see we have a links model and his LOD model. I think by default Blender will have these materials to show just like the matte caps, but along the top bar here, uh, you can swap from viewport shading to uh, material preview and you'll see links materials. First thing we're going to want to do before we do anything else too, this LOD model, throw in the garbage. Doesn't Don't need it. Get it out. You'll get errors on, if you do not do that. Um, after you do that, follow my mouse up here. We're going to swap from uh, view layer to blender file. Type in the word LOD up here at the top. We're gonna make sure we delete everything that has to do with the LOD. You can clear out the search bar, go back to view layer, and now we're ready to go. 
Okay, so now we have Link Skeleton and his mesh in Blender, ready to go. Um, my workflow is going to differ from some other people's, but you'll slowly develop your own workflow for doing this as you as you go. Um, first thing I like to do is just copy Link's mesh and his skeleton, that way I have a reference I can use for later. And then I like to import the model I am replacing Link with. Or if you want to make a custom model, you can do that too. But I have my custom model in my work folder. And you'll see I have a shit ton of models here. Uh, that is purely because I have a problem with modding this game. Um, I'm going to go to Halo 2 Chief. I'm going to import the OBJ file. Halo 2 Chief is gigantic, so what we're going to do is just realign this as best as we can with Link's, ex oops, Link's existing model. We're going to scale it as close as we can to Link's existing model, too. That seems about good there. I usually like to try to line up the shoulders as best as I can. We're going to hit Control and A to save Chief's position here. And now we get to the fun part, which is rigging. Um, it's gonna be different for every model you try to import. Ideally, if you can get a model that's rigged already, you wanna try to match the rig to Link's existing pose. However, Chief is in a weird position. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna select Link's skeleton, go into pose mode, and we're actually going to try to match up Link's pose with the pose that Chief is in. Okay, so you have your model roughly posed to match. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be as close as you can get it, but we can always tweak this later. Um, now that it's in the pose of the model you want it to be, select every bone. The easiest way to do that is hit A. Then we're going to go to Pose, Apply, Apply Pose as Rest Pose. You'll see the link model kind of freak out in the back, but that's okay because we're going to get rid of it. Swap back to object mode, select the link model, delete it. So now we just have link skeleton and our model that we want to replace it with. What we're going to do from here, you're going to select the model, select the rig, hold control and hit P. And we are going to set the parent we're going to use empty groups. This is pretty pretty important part, but what this is doing is essentially parenting the skeleton to the model. That way the bones can move the model. Next thing we're going to do, follow my mouse on the right hand side, we're going to come down to object data properties. And you'll see here that our model now has vertex groups that match the bone names. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to swap into edit mode uh, by hitting tab. And I prefer to work in vertex mode. I actually recommend doing that too. But what we're going to do is we're now going to go through each vertex group, which are these here on the right hand side. Let's let you see that I'm highlighting them. And you are going to assign the vertices to each vertex group. So we'll actually start with the head and work our way down. What I like to do is select as much of the, well, the head as possible. And then you're going to hit control, or hold control and hit L. And under select linked all, I usually prefer to use UVs just because it's a little easier for my own workflow. And we're going to make sure we get all of the head selected. Which it looks like it almost is already. That looks good, but we'll clean it up in a minute. And on the right hand side, we're going to hit assign. Once it's assigned, the way I keep track of my work is I hit H on my keyboard to hide the vertices that have been parented already. So you can see we missed some up here. Select those, assign, hide. And you're essentially just going to do that for each part of Link's body. Okay, so I've went ahead and parented all the vertices in Chief's mesh to the skeleton. Um, depending on your model, you might be done here with waiting, kind of. Um, but with Master Chief in particular, there is a few bones that have no mesh assigned. Uh, for example, the hat, the collar, and the sword and sheath bones. 
for those, my workaround for models that don't have anything that would fit that, if you hit Shift A, it allows you to create new parts of a mesh. And I generally will just create a new part of the mesh specifically for that bone and hide it inside the body. So with the hat, I'm gonna assign that. Shift A, make a new plane, scale it down. Assign it to the collar. Shift A, make a new plane, scale it down. Side it into the sword and sheath. And there we go. So we're gonna select all of these. Grab all of them. Move them up inside the torso where they won't be seen. And there we go. So now if we go into pose mode, we can grab the bones, move them around. Keeps arms a bit broken, but that's okay. If you run into stuff like this, what you can do is go back into edit mode and grab the whole mesh. The mesh, clean up, merge by distance. See there, I moved 80 vertices. So now, as we move the mesh, it moves how it should, for the most part. Got some weird stretching going on, but that's okay. A lot of weird stretching going on, but that's okay. If you end up getting stuff like this and you want to make small tweaks, go back into edit mode with the mesh. You come here under modifier properties. So you're going to select on cage and edit mode. What this will do this will actually allow you to make tweaks in real time with the posed mesh. So let's say I don't want all of this elbow to be jutting out like this. I'm just like these. That looks better. Come up here back to data properties. And I believe this is parented to the left shoulder. So we'll remove the left shoulder. Change it to the left arm. Now the arm stretching doesn't look as bad. So we'll do the same thing on this side. this from the right shoulder, sign it to the right arm. Now his plates aren't nearly as goofed up. Still not great, but go back into pose. We're gonna clear the transform. And now we're good to go as far as the mesh and the parenting goes. Obviously tweak it to the point where it looks good. Um, you know, make sure there's no insane amount of stretching. Another cool thing you can do with this is under the animation exporter, we can import an animation, one of Link's animations. Um, best place to get those is gonna be from the Ship of Harkinian Discord. Under the modding discussion, come up to your pinned messages, and Dana posted some amazing resources for modders. Uh, it's a Google Drive link, but see I'm signed in here. We're gonna go to animations, and if we just type in Link, can access any of Link's animations. Uh, the one I usually go for, I type in run underscore free, and we're looking for normal run free. Copy this, I'm going to import animation. The object is going to be, uh, where is it? What am I looking for? For Link animations, you'll just select this is Link tick box. If you hit import animation, he's now doing Link's run animation, which looks goofy as hell. Um, but if we do it on the actual Link model we're using for reference, you'll see that it's Link's run animation. So this would definitely need some more tweaking to get to a point where I would, you know, upload it. But for now, for the sake of an example, we'll just continue forward. Um, like I said, going into edit mode while the animation's actually playing, super helpful, lets you see where things need to be fixed, like his arm. Alternatively, what you can do is you can edit the actual skeleton too. So let's say his arms need to be spaced out a little more. So we'll scale those out just a hair, scale the shoulders back in. Make sure they're lined up with where they should be. And that already made a bit of a difference. Okay, so now that we have our model to a rigged to a degree where we're happy with it, um, again, not happy with this, but it'll work for the example, uh, we need to talk about materials. Uh, you'll click on the object and on the right hand side you have your material properties. And you can see right now, 
there's a warning that this is not a fast 3D material. What that means is that this is not going to import into Ocarina of Time correctly. To fix that, we're going to go to our Fast64 tab. And under F3D Material Converter, there's a handy dandy little button here that just does it automatically for you. So if I click that, you can see now that these are both set to be Ocarina of Time shaded textures and they're Fast 3D materials. Only problem is that if we deselect Show Simplified UI and go to Sources and open up the texture properties, this texture is way too big for Ocarina of Time to handle. Um, me personally, 32 by 32 is the biggest I'll go, maybe 32 by 64. Uh, but 512 by 512 is way bigger than the engine likes. So what we'll do to fix that is we're going to go back to our work folder. So I'm going to go back to my Halo 2 Chief folder. And I have my textures in here. We're actually going to create a new folder and I'm going to title this High Res Textures. And I believe the only texture this is actually using right now is this one. So we're just going to copy it, paste it in here for later. Now if we go back into Blender, go to UV Editing, go back to Material Properties so we can see what we're doing. We're going to open up this texture in the UV Editor. Go to Image, Resize, resize it to 32 by 32. We go to image and save now we have a very scuffed master chief texture however fast 64 is happy so we're good there um some more advanced stuff you can do with materials too let's say i want to make his visor shiny um i can select his visor easier way to do that is under the material editor you hit select it'll just select it um there's a lot of different presets for materials uh, shiny metallic materials are going to be the shaded environment mapped ones and this is going to look really bad because there's actually it's still using the master chief texture um, but what we can do just swap that out for one of my other models textures where's my master chief uh, uh, let's see master chief visor cube maps uh, we'll just throw we'll throw that one in there and as you can see, it kind of has that metallic look already, which is great. So we'll just stick with that for now. Another important note when you're swapping materials in and out, you'll want to make sure that both format and CI format are set to RGBA 16. Otherwise, you'll get uh, broken textures in game. So now that we're ready to go, we're going to want to set up some folders to export. OK, so we're back in my mod tools folder. What we're gonna do now, uh, you can see that I have export folders for all of my other things. We're gonna create some new folders. So I call this one export Halo to Chief. And what we're gonna do also is make another new folder. This one's gonna be called export Halo to Chief Textures. This is for when we decide when we do the uh, high res textures. What we're gonna wanna do is grab these folders. You're going to grab the file paths to them. Back in Blender, under the both the F3D Exporter and the Ocarina of Time tab, under Export Skeleton, you're going to want to set the... Where did it go? Use Custom Path. Change the export path to your export, export folder or the internal game path. That's going to be the file path for Link's skeleton. So if we swap back over to Dana's asset guide, type in Link, and we're going to look for Link Boy. That's adult Link. Link Child is young Link. We're going to paste that in here. So it should be objects, object Link Boy. The skeleton name is going to be this G adult Link or G adult skeleton. I believe young link is g child scale or g link child scale which it is so your export skeleton structure should look like this i'm going to select the skeleton click export and if we hop back over to our export folder there's now a, an objects folder inside of it and we can file follow this in 
See, there's a ton of files in here. That's fine. We'll come back to that in a second. Next thing we'll want to do is open up Retro. Once you're open in Retro, you're going to click Create OTR. This is a custom model, so we're going to click Custom. Go to Scan Directory. We're going to find our export folder. Export Halo 2 Chief. Click into the folder. Don't click Objects. Just click Select Folder. Stage Files. Finalize OTR. Generate OTR. Go back to your main uh, uh, Ship of Harkinian directory. And this is going to go into your mods folder. I need to delete the mods I have right now for Adult Link. So I'll delete this. I'll delete this. And we're just going to title this. Halo 2 G. And you want to make sure that the OTR extension stays on the end. Click save. And if we jump back to our mods folder now, we should have a halo2chief.otr, which we do. So if you're using low res textures, you could just stop here. Um, if we launch Ship of Arcanian, I'm just going to pop open the debug menu. And yeah, Hyrule Field's fine. We'll load up as adult. And now we have Chief. You can see that his hands are broken. He has low res textures though. We're gonna fix both of those. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is create the high res textures OTR for Chief. The way we're gonna go about doing that, in retro, we click replace textures. We do not have a replacement texture folder. We do, but we don't. Um, so we're gonna click no. It's gonna ask you to select the OTR. You're gonna hit select. Click on your mod, click open. We're gonna go to process. And we're gonna find our way back to our textures folder. Which should be right here under Halo 2 Chief Textures. Open that up, click select folder, and the textures have been extracted. So we go back to our textures folder now. Go to Halo 2 Chief, objects, Object Link Boy, we have our low res textures that we just created in Blender. Now, what we're going to do is navigate back to our work folder with the high res textures in it with the folder we created. I'm just going to copy this, paste it, replace the texture, go back to Retro, click Replace Textures again. Now we do have a texture replacement folder. We're going to click select. You're going to go back to your high res textures folder. We're going to open the folder that's inside that folder. So you'll want it so you have objects and textures here. Click select. Uh, if you check, if you turn this on, what that'll do, if somebody hits alt on their keyboard, it'll swap between high res and low res textures. It's mostly for if you're doing like environment textures, or I guess if you wanted to use low res and high res textures for your model, you could. Um, but from here, you're gonna click stage textures, finalize OTR, generate OTR, go back to our mods folder, and we're gonna make a new OTR for our only our textures. So I'm just gonna call this Halo 2 Chief Textures. So now if we go back to our mod folder, we have Halo 2 Chief, we have Halo 2 Chief textures, we launch the game. Open up debug. Uh, I'll just go to Hyrule Field again. I load it in as child. You now see that Chief has his high res textures. So while we're still on the topic of textures, one thing you might want to do, you'll notice that Master Chief is in grayscale and so is Link. Um, you may want your tunic to change colors with the Cosmetic Editor and with Goron Tunic, Zora Tunic, all that good stuff. Um, so we're going to select Chief's Armor Texture here. And under the Material Properties, or the Fast 3D Material Properties, under Combiner, 
you want to come down to color combiner cycle two. We're gonna change this from primitive color to environment color. This will make him go completely black in Blender, but that's okay. And we're gonna re-export the skeleton. We're gonna kind of rinse and repeat what we did earlier with retro. Um, we're gonna go to custom, select directory, find our Halo 2 chief directory, or export Halo 2 chief. Select the folder again, stage it, finalize it, generate it, twist it, slap it, pull it. Uh, and then we're gonna just save over. And now when we go in game, chief should be green. Should have a Link's tunic color. Just load in the debug. Um, doesn't really matter where we go, so let's go to Hyrule Field again. Now chief is green. And you'll see when we swap our tunic colors that he becomes red or blue. Or if you open up the cosmetic editor and change the default colors, then he'll take on whatever color you assign. One thing to note with this, uh, if you're using a model that has preset textures that are colored in, for example, uh, Melee Link, when I did that one, I had to create new grayscale textures in order for that to work. Otherwise, the textures are going to get kind of wonky. All right, so now we get to the really, really, really fun, tedious part of making these models, and that is the hands. The way Ocarina of Time works is it has a separate hand model for each piece of equipment that Link uses, and it also has models for Link's hands when he doesn't actually have any equipment in them. So my workflow for this, um, I'm actually just gonna slide these over a bit so they're out of the way. Um, in your Ocarina of Time tab, you have this Oot DL exporter. Um, what we need to do is open up the repository of models that Dan has created and go to object DLs. And again, we're just gonna search for a link until we find adult link in the list object link boy uh, for example what we're gonna do here and you only need to do this for the hand models do not touch the arms um, unless they're like the one the specific ones that hold the bow stuff like that uh, we're just gonna grab the I don't know the left hand holding master sword near don't worry about the far ones either um, we just want the near models swap back into blender and under import dl i'm gonna paste that into where it says dl here um that actually no that's fine um we're gonna come over here to the objects copy this and under object we don't need where it says objects we just need the object link boy part and we're gonna click import dl and you'll see here, we have Link's hand holding the Master Sword. Now we need to edit this model so it fits ours. So I'm just gonna come over here to Chief. I'm going to grab his hand. I'm going to hit P to separate it. And again, we're gonna hit Alt and P. Clear the parent. That way we just have his hand. We want to make the origin of the object as close as we can to the center of the hand. We're going to set this back to 0, 0, 0. And we're essentially just going to pose this so it's almost in the same position Link's hand is in. It's kind of hard to tell with the black texture, so I'm just going to swap back to render preview. Just want to get this positioned as best as you can again this is just going to be kind of a quick dirty tutorial so it's fine so we have his hand, his hand here and i'm just going to take the master sword directly from ocarina of time link so i'm going to delete his hand yeah it's going to look really bad but that's okay gonna merge these two and this is the important part you want to make sure the origin stays exactly where it is so to do that hit control a apply all transforms and you'll see the little origin dot move back to zero 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 which is what we want 
I'm gonna go through real quick and make sure the materials are set up correctly for the hands, for the master sword, because sometimes they can get kind of goofy. Like this one got set to color index. We need to make sure that's RGBA. Same with these. Make sure they're all RGBA 16 bit. actually delete Link's hand materials down here because we're not using those and now we have the hand and the master sword ready to go from here we're gonna go to our fast 64 tab and under export display list we want to make sure this has the same name so we're gonna grab the left hand holding master sword DL go to fast 64 paste it in here under objects Grab object link boy. This time you want the objects and the slash here. So you want it to be object slash object link boy or object link child, whatever you're replacing. And export path, we're going to grab the exact same folder we exported the skeleton to. So we're going to grab that, copy it, paste it, and scale. I always set to a thousand, otherwise things get way too small for some reason. Finally, we can export the display list. See a little success message from Blender. Come back into Retro, go to Custom, and again, exact same workflow. We're gonna go to our Halo 2 Chief, select folder, stage files, finalize OTR, generate OTR, back to our mods folder, overwrite our Halo 2 Chief, and when we load up the game, should be able to whip out the Master Sword and Chief's hand should be his hand and not Link's. Which it is. It's off. It's definitely off center. But the curse of working on these DLs for the equipment is that you have to kind of tweak to get it the hand in the right place. Um, and then you'll just slowly go through and kind of do that for each DL for Link's hands. Uh, you'll probably want to do the same for the Sword Chief bow boomerang um ocarina see link's hands are just his vanilla hands still but once you go through and replace all the hands your mods essentially ready to go um, and that's kind of a a quick and dirty tutorial on how to make a link model for ship of arcanian uh, if you have any questions definitely pop into the ship of arcanian discord hop into the modding discussion we're always happy to help people out um but yeah, if you have any questions, post them in the comments, hop into the Discord, we'll be happy to help you out. Thanks.